Hello and welcome. You are watching the PDJ National Tour on Jomez Pro. We are at stop number three, the 2019 Santa Cruz Masters Cup presented by Innova Disc Golf. Coverage also supported by the PDGA. Big sexy commentary here with you from Santa Cruz, Nate Sexton and Jeremy Cole. And we have a 24 hole course here at De La Viega. So we'll be bringing the first 12 to you. Here's our card. Ricky Wysocki, defending champion. 45% birdie percentage. Outstanding on this course. Fifth place finisher from last year. Bad at crossing his arms. <laughs> but good at wearing new belts. True. And this is exciting. Watching Michael Johansson, first time out here at De La Viega. Famed wood golfer. Really excited to see how he attacks this course. Amateur champion from three weeks ago, Jacob Blair. Hole one this year, going up the hill, par three, 345, playing like 430, probably. Yeah. Quite a quite a steep hill here, and the players are probably going to go distance driver, unless you're really an elite distance thrower, then you might club down to a fairway. And this hole is only brought down by about maybe 45, 50 feet from its placement in years prior, but it plays maybe 80 to 100 feet shorter. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. I'm going with the destroyer. Are you trying to hang that out over the right bush, or were you just trying to go straight at it? I'm trying to go fairly straight, but I didn't get much on that one. Yeah, you're looking at the basket, though. Mm -hmm. MJ's got about this much distance, I feel like. If he needs it, I think he can get into it, but that's a little bit of, I don't know, that didn't seem like a full yeah. effort yeah. to go for it. Rick, I think, is going with that fairway driver. Yeah, a little a, lower and straighter. T-Bird 3. And he's loving it. Mm -hmm. Right underneath the steps. That'll be a tap in to start Ricky's round. And Jacob, I think a really good sign. We, when I saw him just rip a nice committed power shot. Yeah. You know, it's like you never know what kind of nerves somebody's feeling in their first mm -hmm. kind of Jomez type experience. We didn't see that happen from the tee, but that's oh. not his fault. No, that was a great shot. That's just De La Viega. I mean, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with the course, it's just full of opportunities like that looming at every single hole. MJ right to the basket. At about 40 feet here. Ooh. Lucky to have it not roll anywhere. I came up with a new word yesterday for any time you get daylod. Mm -hmm. um, daylod is just the word that we use out here for rollaways, mm -hmm. spit outs, getting caught two meters. But the new word is dumb fortunate. Okay. Yeah. I don't mind that. You feel where I'm coming from yeah, with that? I don't it's mind like. That. Maybe not the rollaway is dumb fortunate, but like two meters to me is dumb yeah, fortunate. Yeah, absolutely. Great birdie from Rick. Pars, yeah. pars for the rest of the group. On to hole two. Similarly uphill, but more trees. 276, par three. The basket is going to be around here to the right. You have your option of two shots. You can kind of play this turnover gap. The drone is flying, or you can take a little bit of a straighter line through a smaller gap and try to come in with a slight hyzer to the green. The green is very slopey though, so you really want to control your angles. There's a lot of rollaways to be had here. Just picking the right line's difficult alone. Then you gotta worry about the rollaways, and Ricky's going for that Anheuser line. Pretty yeah. much nailing it. That mm -hmm. was a great shot. Left somewhere around circle's edge, maybe just outside. I'm going TL3. That's not what you like. Oh, no. I grip locked it and I got the worst kick. So <laughs> you're that's pretty far down the hill, unfortunately. Yeah. That's just unfortunate. And bad. MJ safely to the top of the hill. Jacob. Yeah. Coming out firing. Yeah, no kidding. He's got a lot of power. And a positive roll this time. A little bit forward. Mm -hmm. 
Here is a tomahawk, pretty blind. I yeah. thought I threw it pretty well, but I didn't. It turned out I caught some branches, mm -hmm. and that rolled. Oh, goodness. The ground play out here. What else can you say besides just every single hole? You have to be so focused, so committed to the angles and lines. And look at this. Yeah, there was still quite a lot in my way. Okay, but you have a putt. You're inside the circle. Mm, no. No, you're not inside the circle. This is a putt for four. And just like that, you're off to a... Not a great start. Not a great start. Especially considering these are birdie putts. Look at that. Great birdie there from Jacob. Such a tough hole. And here is Ricky to take a four-stroke lead on yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's what he's concerned of. Yeah. Right there. He's well, thinking, you got to worry. You got to worry about to that. to get four strokes on Nate. A pretty amazing start for Rick, though. Deuce, deuce. Mm -hmm. Perfect way to do it. I'm in for a double bogey. Surprised to see that this hole only averaged exactly three. I thought that it would average well above par. Yeah. Just all the things you can hit, all the rollaways. You can see the trouble that you got into. One bad kick, and you yeah. really had no chance to really do much else. Yeah, I just, yeah, I really need to make a fantastic shot to get out of that. Hole three, par three along the ridge, 354. This one is has pretty good slope on both sides. It's a fairly wide gap, but if you kind of mess up your angles or you throw a driver and he gets away from you, you can definitely go pretty far down the hill on either side. This is just a beautiful hole for a transition to get to the top of the world, which is one of the most famous holes in the sport. Ricky, a little bit right with this one. Kind of squeaks through it. Oh, man. Definitely squeaks through. Yeah, he's got a putt. Mm -hmm. And that was probably a fortunate break there for Jacob. That's heading down to a really bad spot. A huge slope left. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I'm sure MJ's throwing Comet there. Well, I'm not sure, but I, that's my guess. Yeah, I like that guess. Not bad. I'm trying a forehand. Just need this thing to break a little bit. Looking so starting good. to do it, but that just a little late. Sticks out so far, man. It is just a sore thumb considering how good that line looked. Oh, and this is, was a bit of a shank from Jacob. He I, I came out of his hand wrong. Mm -hmm. This is for par. And he's just kind of mm -hmm. laying that up. That kind of looked like the first evidence of nerves, potentially. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Oh, no, don't do it. Yeah, the last thing you want to see after a double bogey is anything rolling. I was worried that thing was gone. It luckily stopped pretty, pretty quickly. MJ over the top. Oh, Ricky's not nearly as close as he looked from the catch cam. For a turkey? No, that's a little low. Yeah. No problem for the par. MJ. MJ. Yeah, a little bit of work left there, but good par putt. Looks like a par for Rick, and Jacob will clean up his bogey. Ricky does this fun head nod thing that always entertains me when he just doesn't get a birdie. Like, that's not a bad part to get. But he just shakes his head like, he's just so frustrated. <laughs> it's so funny. Hole four, top of the world, playing in the short position for safety, which I think is actually a really good change. Yeah, I mean, it's a little disappointing, obviously, not to play this iconic long hole, but it was just a matter of when not so much if that someone's going to get a really really serious injury mm -hmm. and this course is going to be in danger so i applaud the the tournament directors for making this choice yeah it's a it's a very difficult decision to make it's such a famous such a fun and popular hole and ricky's still going huge somehow even though it's a shorter hole he went th <laughs> such a high hyzer i think with a firebird and he just parked it you could throw as hard as you want or you could just throw a soft little sidearm you know yep. one of those two options works yep. MJ going with a banger GT, I believe. This looked like an ace run from where we were. 
over the top. And that's the play I thought you'd be pulling out. 2015s. This was a little low. Got a friendly roll, but mm -hmm. it's still uh, outside the circle. Well, going straight at it or trying to, but not getting the right angle out of his hand. And that count goes to the ground, which is all you really want to see at that point. You just don't want to get that unlucky two meter over there. The dumb fortunate two meter. Mm hmm. Here's my birdie look. And it's crushed. <laughs> you went. You went full send, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long comeback putt for Big MJ time putt. As he gets his first birdie of the round. Sweet. Maybe not a single flut. Uh, he hardly floods. Good par putt. Ricky just a little bit of work left for his birdie. Nice birdie. Jacob for par. Nice and easy. Now we go to hole one. Old hole one or course hole one. This is the traditional starting hole of the course. 315 feet, uphill, low ceiling. Basically a full power shot. Even at, th even at 315 because it has to stay so low Somehow, if you miss all the trees, then you got to figure out how to get over or under this log and skip your way up to the basket. This is a rare birdie. Yeah, and, and as things, you know, the course gets older and older, more things fall down and die, yet look at this. this. But it just oh, looks so easy. Yes. This hole still has a million of these tiny trees that just normally break off and die at other courses, but... <laughs> That was, that's one of the best shots I've ever seen on this hole. Just no so clean, mm -hmm. over top. Oh, yes. It had no chance but to be parked, which you never, like a lot of times you throw on this hole and you're just kind of hoping, praying, and yep. wishing. Yeah, absolutely. That one was just destined to be parked. Wow. Now that's a much more common type shot, catching these railroad mm -hmm. tides. It's looking decent. Just didn't really get any skip, but it's yeah, you're happy play. with that. Yeah. yeah, uphill putt. One of the few times in the course where you can give it a full bid and not really be too scared about what can happen unless you come up low. Then of course, yeah, day law. MJ makes a nice effort from back there with a little half throw, and Jacob gonna go with a similar strategy. Oh yeah, whoo. That looked great. Pretty close. MJ rocking the basket with that par putt, and Ricky just got eight feet left. Look at this guy, four under, and probably the one he missed is m maybe the easiest one. If not, maybe top of the world is the easiest. But yeah, yeah, just a on fire start for Ricky. Hole six, three or two hundred seventy feet, par three. This one is going sharply uphill and then left. You commonly will see. Forehand Anheuser or a tight backhand hyzer. You really just want to try to get up here and get a friendly skip. But so many trees and roots and rocks that are trying to stop you, not to mention the fact that there's a huge drop off right behind the basket. Yeah, if you go over that hill, this is one of the few, or one of the several places I should say, that if you crest that hill, you might not see your disc again. And Oh, so no. close. <laughs> Ricky almost landing it perfectly, and you can see the spotter. Just landing it right next to the basket, but it's down the hill now. I mean, you can legitimately roll 200 feet down that hill. Yeah. I mean, it's happened so many times. 
MJ with a nice shot there. I'm going with a star sidewinder. That's looking pretty good. I'll just push the back edge. Didn't get that flex. Oh, there. that's how it did it. Oh, okay. I also thought it was right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I got up there. I was like, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, was, I had a feeling maybe we we're going to see something exciting. There. This was a wow. nice angle. You can tell he played the amateur event. You know, he was here practicing this course. Yeah. Now, I don't know if he's local per se, but yeah. he definitely knows the lines out here because he kept that really tight, which is, that's the main mistake you make is you just get scared of the trees on the left and you end up pushing it Correct. too far right. And Ricky fortunately does recover his disc. It did not go all the way down the hill. And he hit some branches and did not roll, so that's a great thing. MJ with the... Smart play there. You have to lay that putt up unless you're a crazy person. Jacob, another nice birdie. Yeah. Up and over the rim, just barely. Oh, yeah. Finally got a birdie. Mm -hmm. This putt does scare you into putting low quite often. Hole 7, par 3, downhill 354. This one you can go straight at it with a backhand mid-range. There's a low forehand flex, and there's also the high forehand out and around. A lot of trees near the basket, which is actually ends up usually being a good thing. You're coming in a little bit fast, going down the hill. Those trees are often more friendly than, you than think? a problem. Yeah. Often. Okay. All right. I'd say it's kind of like you never really know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. I guess so. But chocolates usually are still pretty good. That was just caught the last little tree that it could and, and dropped me pretty short. Here's that low up the middle play. Didn't quite ever get flipped over for him. What's Rick doing there? I'm thinking Firebird, but I don't I don't for sure now. Nice yeah. shot. Yeah, you got through. There's just a lot of foliage up there that you just kind of have to find that one little hole that you're comfortable with. Oh, and MJ came so close to those trees, but makes it past them. Um, not a great spot, but not down a cliff either. Yeah, not down a cliff and probably just a long jump putt approach away. Wow, good effort. That should be fine, though. Yep. Jacob with a nice bid. And Ricky for another birdie. And, I mean, he's got six strokes right now on you, man. Like, he's just thinking to himself, this is for six strokes over the legend. Yeah. And he's still, with that mentality, is able to step up and make that putt. That's just incredible poise. Well, I'm kind of catching him because he was up by, oh, oh no, MJ, no. low. I was going to say he was up by four through two holes, and mm. now he's only up six through seven holes. Yeah, so, so I'm kind of, I'm the one with the momentum. <laughs> so stupid. A good putt for Jacob. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Whatever you got to do to trick yourself into thinking that you've got momentum on your side. Yeah, well, yeah, I was on pace to lose by 48, and it's looking like I'm going to do far better than that now. <laughs> oh, God. Hole 8, par 3, 390 feet, kind of uphill at first and downhill to finish. This is a really quirky hole. As you can see, so many trees, cliff down the entire right side. Forehand roller is a popular play, as well as backhand mid-range or fairway driver just trying to throw kind of low and very very straight two meters a big risk here i think that helps the roller play this is a mm -hmm. firebird from ricky and it's heavy on the cut you want the disc to kind of do what ricky's is doing 
pushing that right side of the fairway and then break late towards the pin at the end. But, you know, to avoid the roots, to avoid the mm -hmm. trees, to avoid everything and get down there, it's just kind of a thrown hope. Rick was very worried there, but got a pretty decent result. I'm going with Star Sidewinder. And that was an interesting line, kind of going Roll tight left. But just to get out to the field and have an easy jump putt approach is uh, not a bad play. Yeah, I try to pl play the flippy disc on a lot of cut. And if I get it right, maybe I hit a tree and I get close. If I get it wrong, hopefully it goes to the field and there's not a lot of... Uh, issues over there that had the potential for roll away but i don't know if it did it didn't roll but it is very short mm -hmm. mj going for the field goal play looking good just has to get clean through eh, it got it's, somewhat clean that's at least uh it's better than average mm -hmm. yeah i definitely agree with that this is the hardest hole on the course we have you know, Dela's always been known for being an all par three course. They decided to change I five to a uh -oh. par four this year. Uh oh, is this bad? Eh, just got overstable on him. You know, considering the hole he's having so far, not what he wanted. Yeah, gonna have a really tough putt for four. And MJ is cruising here. Some good trees to stop the shot, but that is but a very difficult putt. For he's ball. got about eight inch, eight inch ceiling to work with there. Good approach there from the jump putt, and Rick just has a tap in for par, which almost feels like a birdie on this hole. Yeah, it's a special two. Mm -hmm. and Don't do it to him. Yeah, it's going to stop. Hole average is only 3.28, which I was really surprised by. I thought that it would have averaged much more than that. And look at the MJ has to go to the knee and sidearm from inside the circle. Gosh, that's tough. Double bogey for Jacob. I will make par. And MJ going to be dunking in a bogey. And on the 10-year anniversary of Greg Barsby getting the flick roller ace on this hole and winning the national tour, I got to give a quick shout-out to Nate Perkins, Calvin Heimberger, <laughs> Brady Oak, A.J. Risley, Matt Bell, and Andrew Rich, who were the only players in the field to pick up the two. Wow, and there's our leaderboard checking a lot of hot scores already out. The conditions are perfect for scoring. Almost no wind to speak of. Sun out pretty much all day long. Yeah. Beautiful day here in Santa Cruz. Hole 9, par 3, 393. Again, kind of flat to start and then breaking downhill low ceiling and this is just kind of a tunnel shot the whole way it's one of those holes where you rarely ever throw it perfect and as soon as you do you're like slow down slow down because <laughs> it feels like as soon as you do yeah. finally get the line right you might just cruise right off the cliff i labeled this in the bonus birdie category oh yeah ricky looking so good just needed to break a fraction more to the right and would have been all the way down now he's got a difficult approach to get that par i'm going with a leopard three here too low but check this skip out it didn't even slow down hardly at all yeah it was friendly made 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 what would have been a kind of a nervy approach into just a really easy approach it's the scariest approach if you come up halfway short on this hole if you hit one of these trees these guardians you have 200 feet with nothing in the way but you don't know how to throw it yep I mean, a putter nose up, I guess, but it's just so fast. And that hard pan ground is just relentless. And, and we'll we're going to see, see him approach. try it now. Mm -hmm. Ricky as well having a little bit of difficulty. But here is Jacob trying to get that speed control just perfect. He goes with a lot of Anheuser here. And it kind of gets fortunate, mm -hmm. I think, to sneak oh, yeah. through all those trees. Wow. And he essentially got the distance about right just a little bit off on his angle. Ricky able to kind of spin putt one. Oh, wow. Well, very well done. Mm -hmm. You can see there weren't many holes for Rick back there. That's a pretty easy decision. Yeah, I didn't think anything about that. It's got to be a layup. MJ MJ's actually going for that. He doesn't lay up. Yeah. I mean, like he traditionally doesn't lay up. It, he has to be in a really bad spot. And this is Jacob for his par. What a great, great up and down. Really good save. 
kind of some late applause there as the people realized how good that was. If you see someone run it in, they're happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no one really ever runs it in out of anger. You're right about that. Kind of a good indication of how good the par was for Mr. Blair. Pars for the whole card. A really, really difficult hole. Again, another surprise. This is how good the field is. Average below par, 2.98. I just don't understand that. That's wow. Incredible. Wow. Hole 10, par 3, 348. One of the easier, more straightforward holes on the course. Kind of a gentle slope by De La Viega standards on the right side. OB on the left. You just want to play a mid-ranger putter, hit about 30 to 40 short, and take your little slide forward to the basket. Rick with a rock. I'll get a counter flare, I'm sure. There it is. And uh, he's shopping. I'm going R Pro Dart. That's a really nice looking line as long as it gets that forward push. Didn't really get much of a skip, which I guess isn't that surprising considering it's an R Pro Dart. But. Yeah, I, I expected a little more on it. I don't know if it caught a root or a rock very mm -hmm. first impact or what, but it's still pretty solid. Mm -hmm. MJ going that left side, and these A normally get the counter flare, and B they also have the logs all the way down the left side of the fairway, which keep those low shots from sliding into the road. This is probably the best of the bunch. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, needed a little love, actually. That may have been going out of bounds. That skip was a little hot. This is not bad if this is the furthest shot from the basket. A lot of action on this one. Off the basket, over off the log. And it's just De La Viega right there. A lot of things could have happened. I mean, but it's in, <laughs> in the end, nothing really happened. But a lot of things could have happened. <laughs> could have been in the basket, could have been out of bounds, could have been down the yeah, hill. And MJ and just folds this one into the basket. This is going to be a fun catch to watch in slow motion. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. Awesome. Very good putt. A lot less drama. Yep. Just straight forward, up and in. Well, you got to get that drama if you want those slow mess shots. That's fair. You got to know how to paint the corners. <laughs> Jacob three. also picks up the birdie, and Rick's going to have to go back in the box. Yeah, three birdies, and Rick still has a little bit of work left. I mean, he's just really struggling, man. Five under oh four, back of the box. Yeah. And look at me sitting even catching them. Yeah, we got three players at even. Hole 11, par 3, 201. This one is just a short turnover going up the hill. You have a fairly wide gap. You just need to get right of that pine. Give yourself a chance for a putt. Really, really bad down to the right. So you mainly want to avoid going down on that right side. Just make sure you're hitting the fairway and getting that little bit of glide up to the pin. Oh, Nate! Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, you. No, you idiot. Yeah, <laughs> that's I all I could. That's I, all I could muster. <laughs> that was a horrible shot. I. Mm, that's what you want right there. Kind of. You can even get heavy with the Anheuser, as you as you saw there with um, MJ hitting the right side edge of the disc, but still not cut rolling. Mm -hmm. This ground really allows that slide play to. Yeah, look at him go. Mm -hmm. Beautiful shot from Jacob. Yep. The trick is just to miss that big tree in the middle up the fairway or not hit this early trees that you hit, which I don't think I've seen. Not too many people make that mistake. Mm -hmm. That's a that was a surprise. Wow. I'm down in the bottom. This can be a hard up and down. Oh, and you almost make it. I nearly made that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Was that in your head? Are you trying to give it a run? Kind of. I mean, it was a small gap, and I just needed to get all the way up the hill. So I figured if you hit this gap, you throw it hard, sure, it could go in. Wow. I was mostly concerned with getting up the hill. That would have been exciting. And you guys are talking about it right now. Yeah. I walked up the hill as, as Rick knocks in this birdie. I, I walked up the hill with the gallery behind me, and when, once we could see the basket, I was like, 
oh, it's in this position? <laughs> I-, I thought it was down there. <laughs> down in the bottomless pit of death. Oh, my God. But yeah, I was I was obviously joking. But yeah, uh, I was really really happy to get lucky. Honestly, I got lucky to have a gap. I got yeah. lucky that my disc kicked mm-hmm. to a place where I had the opportunity to save par because there's places down there where it just isn't possible. Yeah, I mean anything worse than an, a par here is devastating. The easiest hole in the course, averaging two point four. Yep, it's you know it's a hole that eighty five or sixty five percent of the field is birdie. So yeah, yeah. I mean you just can't get a bogey. Yeah. Hole 12, par 3, 310 feet straight ahead. There is a mandatory forcing you to go straight off the tee early. You're going to see backhand flex shots, backhand turnover shots, and the occasional forehand flex shot here. There's a lot of kind of different options to try and navigate your way through these trees. This is the stretch they lovingly call frickin' frack, I believe. These two holes that run right parallel to each other. And this is beautiful from MJ. Yep, just that's, that's kind of the play. Take a mid-range, throw it straight at those three guardians and just kind of find a way through if you can. And the high stall play. And, yep, that's one of the one of the three. Yeah, you got those three big leaf maples that died a few years back. And Rick hits one of them as well. They were beautiful trees, though, when they yeah. had their leaves. Wow. It, this is one of the, the holes I believe that in my f- years of coming to this course since 2012 has changed the most, just yep. with trees just dying off. This is that forehand flex play. Mm-hmm. Did not really get the flex part of it. I hit some trees, but not a not a huge problem over there. trying to dial up a slow mess here oh and so close you have been very close with that disc quite often it's a good way to think about it i think <laughs> and rick from 100 million wow feet. mj from i'm gonna give that 38 i don't think I'm, oh whoa a little See, wind 35 would have been in <laughs> see I'm starting to see. <laughs> starting to see. <laughs> well, at least there's, you know, at this point, the last nine holes, you've only got green and gray in your scorecard. That's good. Mm-hmm. But definitely a slow start. There's a lot of birdies on this course to get. There's also a lot of bogeys to get, too. It's just kind of a navigation. It's how can you get through without the bad numbers and getting enough of those greens and Right now, Rick is off to a good start. 12 under through the first 12. Wait, 12? I mean, yeah, he's six under through the first Six 12. under, yes, but Numbers. still fantastic, yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks to all our Patreon supporters. Thank you to Innova. Thank you to the PDGA. Thank you to my commentary partner, Big Big Germ. We will see you guys for part two.